And should we add the last one? Six, Eleven, six, 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 well done. Oh, well done, Tom. Going one extra. Let's give him a big clap. Right. Pupils at Greenside Primary School in Tameside near Manchester now enjoy learning maths. But they've not always had something to sing about. Seven, seven to 49. Last year when our maths results came out, we had 69% of our children at level four and above, with only 17% at level five. This year we've got 79% level four and above, but 38% of our children at level five, which is, you know, back on track and where we should be. This school is based in one of the most deprived areas of the country and has a high proportion of children experiencing some form of special educational need. So how have staff turned things around? Well, we've concentrated on literacy and especially writing for about the past three or four years on the school development plan. And maths was just ticking along OK on the results until last year we had a particularly poor cohort. So we knew we had to do something quite radical. And we decided we won't go with a literacy renewed framework, we'll go for maths. Go. Right. It has changed radically. There's a lot more emphasis is on the children, speaking and listening, explaining their ideas, and lots and lots of practical things. Got it. Brilliant. Number five, who's next? They've got to take their skills and use it and apply it in other subjects. And so, yes, it works when you've had a bit of a disaster in your SATS results because it fires people up. However, because it is, it's fun, because it's so different, I think teachers all around can benefit from it, you know, lots and lots. The school has been keen to develop a cross-curricular approach to maths. I really hope I am not going to have to use my cane. Yesterday, we had some children who had not rehearsed their arithmetic. Let's hope we have not got that today. And let's hope those children have practised their six times tables last night. Because the new framework is saying that you need to use and apply maths in lots of other situations, I thought, what can I do to try and bring maths in other subjects? So data handling is the most obvious one because you can analyse all sorts of data. Um, but because my class were particularly poor at the times tables when they came up, and then we looked at the Victorians in history and we realised that, gosh, they needed to know it, they weren't allowed to say, I don't know, they weren't allowed to get it wrong. It was just a fun way of bringing in the times tables and putting it into that context as well. Now, as you can see, scholars, we have an empty chair with us this morning. We are very saddened in school today. Anybody please perhaps give me a suggestion why this chair is empty? Yes, scholar. Because he might be poor. Fortunately, it's a little bit more serious than that. Yes, scholar. He's died. That is correct. One of your classmates, unfortunately, is no longer with us. He contracted smallpox and he died in the early hours of this morning. So we are very, very saddened by this. So, we're going to do some data handling today. And you're going to have a look at all these names of the people here and how old they were when they died. And what do you call this chart here? Jack? Fantastic, it's the tally chart. It's more fun because you're finding out something that's actually real and that's not just, oh, you've had seven bananas, how many of you? If you have seven bananas a day, how, how many do you have a week? It's more interesting. Nine. Mm. Perhaps you have not been practising your sewing enough. Remember, this education is primarily for the boys. You need to concentrate on being a good housewife. It's recognised as a weakness in the school, so staff have focused on improving speaking and listening skills. So, what are our learning objectives then? What do we need to do today? Solve word problems. And the next one is to talk and use maths vocabulary, to use those maths words. So we've got our type of talk wheel up today and we're going to be talking together in small groups and quiet discussion to share our ideas. We bring in speaking and listening an awful lot in problem solving especially with the lower set of children as they find reading quite difficult and getting the vocabulary into the children's speaking and listening it helps the children to understand and verbally explain. And if they can verbally explain it to someone else, nine times out of 10, it sinks into their thinking process a lot quicker and a lot easier. So I want you now in your groups, in pairs with the person next to you, 
However you want to do this, to have a think about and a talk about how you're going to solve this problem, off you go. We've been using talk partners since we've developed the new framework. It wasn't easy to bring talk partners in. A lot of the children didn't have the vocabulary to use. So when we first asked the children to talk about maths, they found it very difficult because they didn't actually know what to say to each other. So it's been a lot of me modelling the vocabulary and putting it back into child speak and coming away from using more higher level vocabulary and going back to what say what they might use in key stage one and building up that vocabulary more and more. I can't really explain it. Just write down exactly the bit that you did in your head first because you were going to tell me you did something with the 60 and 30 first, didn't you? So you were left with 34. And then I took the four away from the five. Why did you? Take the four away from the five. Where did you get a four from? That was what you were left with, 34 from your original 65. So you don't need to take that four away, do you? What else do you need to take away? Five. So you have 34 and then you took away five. Another way in which the school has developed speaking and listening skills is by introducing daily mental and oral starters into every year group. Today, using the 100 square, we're going to count forward in steps of three. Now, as you can see, you've got your 100 squares in front of you. I want to see you carrying on the sequence, counting up in steps of three. Put your hand if you think you can do it. Fabulous. Let's have a go. I'm going to give you two minutes. On your own, off you go. Mental and oral starters was one of the things that as a school we were looking at and we decided that each day what we would do is would have a particular focus so each Monday would be counting and then Tuesday would be a different focus and I think again that's benefited the children that each Monday they have a specific thing because as much as they love being hands-on they also love to have and know what's going on each day. Okay so who starts with the ball remind me or the beanbag which number and then if you do you throw it to if you are number one Olivia and what are we counting up in steps of? Three. Are we fours today? Three is good girl. So if we count up in steps of three, if I throw it to Tony, what am I going to say when I throw it, Liam? Three. Three, excellent. So without a sound, you've got a minute to win it starting now. Three, six, three, six. What's after six? Well done. Twelve. Nine. 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 Who are we up to, Scott? Nine. Well done. Well, I used to be really rubbish at it and then I used to like it and then I just got better and better and then I started liking it. You're just a good way of learning numbers. Even the reception class is included in Monday's starter on counting. And there are lots of little bugs hidden all around the garden. So I'm going to give you a pot and I'm going to give you a minute when I say go to go and collect as many bugs as you can. When you're collecting your bugs, you've got to count how many you've got. Get, set, go. I've got a big one. Seven. Three. Back in your circle. Get back in my spot. OK, and we're going to go round the circle and we're going to count how many we've all got. I'll get the box and you can count your bugs into the box. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And we've collected loads. We like to make sure that children are really excited by maths that they're enjoying what they're doing. The counting of the mini beasts fitted in with our topic on mini beasts as well. And we just want to have that practical experience for them. And I suppose if you asked most of the children, they wouldn't even have thought that they were doing maths. And one more is... That's just five, brilliant! I don't think we can count the pebble, can we? It was more like a game for them, which is really important, particularly at this younger age. And I want you all to count how many bugs I put into the lid. And then we're going to try and find the numbers to ten on a number line. You need to do the counting. Callum, you need to go and get the first number. Are you ready? Everyone helping with the counting? One, two, three, four. Go, Callum, go find number four. Is he right? 
Number four, good boy, well done you. I think a lot of foundation stage staff often feel that they're out in a separate block and that they're not included, they're not maybe as important as year six, whereas it really doesn't feel like that. We are part of the framework, although we might not be using it as our curriculum at the moment. We are including the whole school approach, so it's, it's been really good for us. This whole school approach to maths is further extended with half-termly assemblies, when pupils meet with peers in their key stage to test out their math skills. As you can see, we've got all the children's names up here who've had to go in the past and their time that it took them to do it in. So as soon as you've finished, have a glance up at the smart board and jot down the time it took you and see if you were any quicker than last time. In the old framework, the objective to know all the times tables up to 10 times 10 was in year six. However, with the renewed framework, that's gone down to the end of year four. So that was a huge gap to fill. And so by year five and six, the children are meant to know their times tables, give an answer within five seconds, convert it to a fraction, a decimal and a percentage. And when they're coming up to you and they don't know the three times table, you know, we had to do something. Fantastic, B is two minutes 42. Write it on your sheet, B. Keep going, don't give up. Stop, because we've just gone past the five minutes. So, have a look at the screen and write down your time. Creating a positive ethos towards maths using fun activities has been essential in engaging pupils. The builders come in and they think they will need twice as many nails as they will need screws to fix the roof. If they have got 250 screws, how many nails will they need? See if you can work out what calculation would you need. Don't tell me the answer. Think the calculation in your head. OK. Answers? 250 double 250 equals 500. Well done. Hold up your whiteboard, Kayleigh, so everyone can see your calculation. Give them a clap. Well done. They love getting up there and having a go. And, and if they do have a mistake, it's fine. I mean, the first assembly, I did it. And I did it really, really quickly. And I made four mistakes. And they couldn't wait to point out my mistakes and tell me. And I think that whole environment of if we get it wrong, it's fine. That's how we learn. Joe is just as we speak, totaling up the scores. Teachers had uh, four. And the children had eight. One, two, three. Yay! The biggest challenges have been giving people the time to get to know the framework and I think that's about introducing it, you know, slowly and steadily, saying to people, we're not expecting you overnight to be up and running with this and know everything about it, have a go at it. Not just because you've got to, but we've identified a need, we want to improve these things and this is going to support us in doing that. And I think at the end of the 12 months, everybody in the school would agree, yeah, you know, that's that's been the result. It is better. 49, 50, 60, 70, and a double yay, because that was brilliant. So give yourselves a clap.